Um, actually, I was approached by Rob Kabula one night. Uh, I believe we were at, we believe we were in Brooklyn at, uh, where we? I forget the name of the club we were at, but uh, he asked me to, um, he asked me to join the band. He's like, would you be interested in, 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 in um, taking my place? He's like, I got a great job. I've been touring all my life and I'm done. I just want to stay home with my kids and my family. And uh, at the time, I was like 26 years old, and I was like, to me, it was the most amazing thing ever. So uh, I was like, y y yeah, you kidding me? Absolutely. So um, I remember we had a tryout with one other guy. It was much better than me, but uh, I guess they felt I fit in with them, and they um, these guys were just like, you know, it's punk rock. You learn. You know, I really wasn't too good of a bass player at the time, but being on the road, um, Roger showed me a lot, you know, um, it took me a little while to come into my own, to go from just being in a band that plays maybe once a month to being in a, um, a, ba a touring band, you know, it was, it was pretty scary, it was pretty, you know, it was nerve wracking, but um, here I am, um, <laughs> 19 years later. Well, what keeps me motivated is the fact that um, I have friends of mine that get up at five in the morning and do construction, electrical work. They hate their job. They hate it. They hate it. But like me, I've actually managed to follow my dreams and play music and create art. This is some of my, all of my art that I've done and created. Uh, even this is even a, <laughs> a table that I've done. Just try. I love creating. You know, it's just like it's what, um, it's what fuels me. It's what keeps me alive. I just love doing this stuff, and um, I'm able to, you know, live off of what I love to do. And then they say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So that's uh, that's what keeps me motivated to doing this. You know what I mean? It's like so many times we play shows and it's people that come up to me and tell us how much our music has helped them get through another day. I mean, stuff like that's really motivating, you know, to just make a difference in people's lives. Uh, it's pretty amazing, you know. I'm really, um, really blessed to uh, have met these guys and um, they gave me the opportunity to do this. And uh, it's pretty, a pretty amazing journey. <laughs> And with the Stigma Band, it was a thing, we were on the road with Hatebreed, and Jamie Josta was just like, you guys need to do, you know, Stigma, you need to do your own thing, you know. Uh, Roger at the time had disasters. Uh, he was doing his thing, and um, we were like, yeah, Vinny, let's, uh, let's, let's do something, you know. It was just a bunch of friends that got together. We all wrote some songs together, and just had an amazing time. It was just like an incredible experience, just, um getting together with so many guys that like uh, who um, you know I idolize and look up to and just be in the studio with guys like um, Jamie Josta Phil Cavano Freddie Mabel uh, 
the biohazard guys, so many guys that we were just um, came together and just wrote some music. And it just, um, it was a fun thing. It was awesome. Born and bred in this city that never sleeps. It's still my home after all these years. This is for you, New York. I got New York blood going through my veins. New York blood. A fire inside of me with thunder and flame. There's two records. First record was called New York Blood. And the second release was called For Love and Glory. Oh, it's two great records. We just have a lot of fun playing and usually play like once a year. A couple shows here and there. Uh, we're so busy with AF that it's really just, it's hard to really kind of do two bands. It's just too much, you know, especially with me with a family and can't really do it that much so we keep it special we play once maybe twice a year so um yeah check it out man it's good stuff it's a lot of fun Well, first off, the Boots and Brushes show was a success. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, just did a couple of artists um, get to hang up their stuff. And a um, couple of bands, a couple of DJs. It was just a great, a lot of fun. You know, a great New York City night. Uh, Stigma Band played, which was so much fun. Uh, was, who else do we have? Um, I believe Maximum Penalty and um, Ice Cold Killers. It was just a lot of fun, you know. Um, we don't do any, it's not like a serious art gallery show. We just have a bunch of artists, you know, I invite a couple a year. And they get to hang their stuff. And it's just, you know, it's good. It's good to pe for people to see what, you know, what other people are creating. And it's good music and art, it all goes together. So it just worked really well. It was an awesome event. I'm doing another one this year. Uh... In April, the second annual one. And next year, I'm looking to do something bigger. Maybe um, trying to do like two separate rooms, bands in one room, art gallery in the next, something like that. So I'm definitely planning to go bigger with it since it was so successful. This year, we did it on a little bit smaller, I was busy, and have time to put together something as big as I would have liked to. But at least we're definitely doing it this year. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, ha, graffiti. It's funny. Uh, I remember this as a kid. My father always hating on it and saying how the kids tag in the neighborhood like really destroyed it. And um, again, I see where he's coming from with that. I definitely agree. You know. <laughs> but um, my next door neighbor, I, the kid lived right across the street from me. Uh, my buddy Rob Birdley. He used to write Ray, it was his initials. He was an incredible artist. And uh, he would, um, yeah, I would see a lot of stuff that he was creating and stuff. And it was, to me, it was just like an exciting form of art that like, you know, it's just like a lot of times, like, especially like a lot of times you'll just see like <coughs> whatever portraits or Bob Ross paintings, the trees and, yeah, they're nice and everything, but there's nothing exciting about it. You know what I mean? Like that's what the art, like to me, is. I you, what I try to do is I create stuff that like is is fun to the eye. So um, like graffiti to me was just uh, it was just it had that element of um, of danger, you know, of excitement, of getting caught doing it. It was just um, it really brought a whole new life to. Um, what, what, what I just enjoy, enjoy doing, I do cartoon, love doing cartoons and stuff like that as a kid. And it just went hand in hand. And I just really, um, my friend Rob across the street, he, we, um, we'd always get together, hang out and do little pieces in his room and stuff. 
He was showing me how to do the airbrush. I've been doing airbrush since I was a kid too. That was always a lot of fun. Uh, but um, I remember him showing me a bunch of movies. And I forget exactly which movie it was. It wasn't Star Wars because I just seen that one. Uh, I forget what movie it was, but I just remember the graffiti artist scene from the Bronx. I mean, he had his name tagged on the Hollywood sign. And to me, that was just the most incredible thing ever. I was just like, wow, that's just insane to bring it to that level, to something like that. It's just unbelievable. It was very um, inspiring. And uh, not like I've ever went out and um, did that much graffiti like that. That That's 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 another level, you know. I give it up to guys, heavy, the heavy hitters out there who really risk their lives, um, hanging off buildings, doing whatever it takes to get their name up there. Like... That's some real shit, you know? I mean, I go out, I'll bomb every now and again. Um, you know, do some throw-ups, some front pieces, some legal walls. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I was bombing the parkways every weekend. But, um, nowadays, I got a family, and I just don't think that's the best thing for me to be doing. But um, that's what I do here now. I put it on canvas. And every now and again, you know, the addiction kicks in, you know, and I'll catch a tag here and there or throw up something like that. <laughs> I can't help myself. That's how, that's how I got into graffiti. It was just, you know, it was definitely in the late 80s. Had to be about 88, 89. And yeah, and um, it was just a lot of fun. But, you know, glad I never got caught. Stealing paint, going to stores, like paint today, you, you gotta buy it, there's no way to get it. And we would just go into stores like Pergaments and um, TSS, and we would just go and put them in our jackets and just walk out like it was nothing. It's amazing we never got caught walking out cans clanking stuff you know like i don't know how we even get in trouble it's crazy but um man it was a lot of fun I miss those days definitely um there's a band called ache it's a pretty awesome band really cool uh, Crazy Eddie is another one I really like. So there's definitely bad new bands from New York that are popping up that are really awesome. Uh, they're doing a lot of shows at A7 Sunday matinees, which is really awesome. And it's um, they, you know, it's really creating another another scene again. You know, because it kind of dies out, but it always happens. It comes in, it goes goes up, goes down. But um, yeah, there's definitely bands out there that are doing it and um, still doing it. This, uh, this music will never die, you know? It's just like, it always has its ups and downs, but the music, the message is way too powerful. There's just no way, you know? So it's pretty awesome just to see it kind of like coming into its own again. Bunch of young kids went to a show. I don't even know these kids. It's great. It's, it's what we need. We need the youth to keep it alive. So it's incredible. You, got, you know, you got to go out. Cause like, I feel like uh, kids today just rather sit home on their computers, on their iPads, and um, they, they just watch it from home, you know? But it's like, there's no socializing. There's no, like, going out and having fun. You're sitting home, and, and you know, it's just, like, it's ridiculous. People need to go out and, and, and enjoy life, enjoy the city life, you know? Meet people, talk to people, make friends, you know? It's so important, so important. Get out of your house, kids, today. Forget playing video games. It's a waste of life. It's a waste of time. I hate video games. I played them as a kid. Look, I get it. They're fun. Don't get me wrong. But there's so much more to life than just sitting home playing video games. Please get out. Support the scene. Start a band. Write a zine. Make art. Do graffiti. Well, 
definitely the bands that I got into first for hardcore was like, you know, Murphy's Law, the two, you know, two first Murphy's Law records, uh, Gnostic Front, Victim in Pain, uh, classic Chromags, Age of Quarrel, I mean, these, Killing Time, Bright Side, Bad Brains, The Roar Sessions, these are records that, like, really, uh, you know, um, the staples of hardcore, you know what I mean? They really created what is going on today, you know what I mean? There's so many bands that, like, hardcore, I mean, like, when Roger and Vinny and all these guys tell me about stories, how they were the kids just getting together and just having fun. They didn't even know they were creating a scene. They were just doing their things, being themselves, and just created this form of punk rock that was a little more pissed off and aggressive and um, you know 40 something years later um, it's worldwide It's everywhere. Hardcore is, it's, um, it's everywhere. It's worldwide. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's going on like that. So uh, it's important. To... You know, you should know the roots of, of, of the music and where this all came from and go back to the, even the early punk stuff from where, oh, from hardcore spawned and where that came from, you know? There's so much good music out there. There's so many amazing bands. You know, I mean, there's the Ramones, there's GBH, there's Discharge. You know, like all these bands is like what really kind of got together. Like you know, started like, was what made you know the beginnings of hardcore. Black Flag. It's pretty much like you know, Minor Threat. All these bands. It's just like incredible stuff. So much power. So much energy. Honestly, like, there's nothing like hardcore because it's it's the band and the audience together that make the show. There's nothing like that. You go to see a show, there's a light, you need a light show and all these special effects and all that stuff. There's none of that with hardcore. Hardcore is just the band and the audience together making the show. And there's nothing like that, you know, being able to get on stage and sing those lyrics that you love so much, you feel so passionate about with the singer into the mic and just to be able to just release yourself and just jump off the stage. And there's nothing like that. There. There's no release like that. <laughs> I miss actually being on the other side and moshing and stage diving and all of that, you know. Um, unfortunately, uh, you get a little bit older and um, I, don't know, I can't do it. It's just that, you know, uh, I'm on the other side now. You know, it's hard. I can't, I can't do that. I can't risk myself getting hurt so I can bring this to the other kids, to everybody out there who wants to sing along to our music, you know. But um, every now and again, I'll come out of retirement, <laughs> jump off the stage. Depends on how much I drank that night. <laughs> That's usually, <laughs> that'll usually make me jump off the stage, you know, depending on who's playing. But uh, yeah, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like hardcore punk rock. It's just so roaring in your face. No bullshit, no fancy light show, no... Um, fancy outfits or it's just pure energy heart and soul and that's it
Well, I hate to sound cliche, but CBGB's was just an incredible place. Uh, I, it's hard to explain, like, really why it was, like, such a shithole, hole in the wall. Just, you know, there was nothing, like, obviously fancy or anything to say that, like, it looked good. It was just, it looked like shit, but it sounded incredible. And the feeling of that room was just... I had something to it, you know what I mean? That's why it was so successful over the years. And so many bands have played there. I mean, any band that we probably are into these days, I'm sure I've played there at least once or twice. I mean, I'm sure I played there like five to ten times. Uh, probably, what am I saying? Probably more. Uh, I can't even count, but uh, off the top of my head. But um, I don't know. Places had this energy that was just something that you just, I don't know. It was incredible. It was really it was hard to explain. I guess you had to just be there to experience it. Uh, but there's definitely other clubs that were really fun. Uh Cody Island High is one I missed. I was on St. Mark's Place. Really loved that club. Castle Heights. If it wasn't for Castle Heights, that's like, you know, grew up there. That was an amazing place in Queens where um, I spent a lot of time in my life. Met a lot of people in the scene and uh, a lot of good friends I still see on the regular today. You know, it was just uh, those places were just um, they were special. You know, I missed them, missed them a lot. I, I, I've, I've expressed this throughout the interview. Throughout the interview, uh, I think it's really important to just go out, and get out of your house, and, um, sit home and rot. You know, play video games. Like, what good is that going to do? Like, if you think about it, like, what good is that going to do besides waste time? You know, even if you're going to do something like, I mean, I don't know, watch a good movie, watch, watch a good documentary, something, you know, something that relates to, like, something that makes you feel good, you know? I mean, I can't really see how much satisfaction you get out of winning the next level of a video game, you know? I don't know, that's cool. I'm knocking it, I am. I'm not into it, you know what I mean? I just think it's a waste of time, a waste of life. I don't really watch much television. I don't really like television. Um, I watch a movie every now and again with the family, you know, my wife, my daughter. Uh, my daughter loves going to the movies, so does my wife. So that's cool. That's fun to do that together, you know? But uh, I think TV's a waste of time. Uh that's just me. I'd rather make art or try to write music. That's just, you know, what I'd rather do. More to life than just sitting home and rotting. So that's my final words with that. You can check out my art on Instagram, Mike Gallo1975 or Gallo Originals. And I have a website. It's galloriginals.com. Gallo underscore originals dot com. You can check out my stuff. Uh, I have t shirts, I have backpacks, cell phone cases, all sorts of fun stuff that I've created. Um, and I just put them on t shirts, you know. So if anybody likes that, checks it out, like any of my designs. Maybe you couldn't afford a painting or the print, or they ran out, you weren't able to. But you know what? If you really like that design, you can wear it every day. I don't know about every day, but. Yeah, check it out, man. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, thank you to Sack One and Bones for um, having me part of this interview. I want to thank you guys and um, give it up to the New Zealand hardcore scene. And uh, play music, create art, do graffiti, live life, enjoy it. Thank you. Hardcore lives. I miss the old New York.